okay so let's go to the next slide okay so the objectives of this workshop or first i'm going to give a short introduction to on demand and then i'm going to talk about how to do file management in on demand and job management and how to do uh, interactive shell access via on demand and then i'm going to help you to launch interactive desktop and other graphical user interfaces we have like jupyter notebook matlab and shell and vs code editor on compute nodes in discovery through on demand so these are the objectives of the workshop okay so what is open on demand so basically open on demand it provides a single integrated access point for all of the discovery hpc resources so you can you just need a simple web browser and a net connection uh, to connect to discovery earlier you have to do a command line shell access if you want to interact with discovery but now we have like a, a web interface so you can go to your browser and you can uh, hit the url and connect to on demand then you can submit a job to discovery so that, that is on demand and some of the benefits you can do uh, all the file management operations uh, in on demand and you can uh, submit or manage slump jobs and then you can launch interactive jobs and guis like jupyter notebook vs code editor and sh uh, interactive shell and also you have a shell access via on demand that i will show you later in the presentation and what's the purpose of on demand so the purpose is it's it's more of a fancier way of uh, interacting with discovery so it's like you have a web interface you know it, that that makes your life easier to interact with discovery so that's the purpose All right so i'll show you how to connect to on demand so the first thing you have to do is you have to be uh, in the nmsu network for example if you are at home or outside so you need to connect to the nmsu vpn so i will show you how to connect to nmsu vpn okay so this is the uh, vpn value you have to enter and the group is nmsu and this is your my nmsu username and the my nmsu password and hit connect all right so you are connected to nmsc vpn and now just go to this url okay i think there was a network change let me reload this again all right so I actually logged in so that's why I'm, I'm able to see the dashboard so i'm just still logging out and let you know how to uh, sign in so it's, it's just your nmsu username and password okay so so once you have entered your nmsu credentials you will see the on-demand dashboard and we'll be exploring all these options today files jobs and clusters and interactive apps and my interactive sessions and let me switch back to the slides yeah so basically it says you go to this url and enter your username and the password and make sure that you are connected to nms vpn if not on the nms network okay uh, so to manage files and directories in open on demand just simply select the files drop down then you will see a list of uh, directories available for your account and select one of the directories to manage uh, files in that directory you can do copy edit paste and if you want to upload or download or whatever you want you can do that using this uh, files drop down option okay and these are the use cases on the left hand side you see the number one so that's actually the file explorer pane for example if you want to go inside the on-demand directory let me turn on the laser pointer yep for example if you want to uh, go inside the on-demand directory you just simply double click on it and if you want to collapse it back you simply click on that directory again and that's the use case one and the use case two you see view edit rename move download copy paste and select and select all so using these options you can do uh, the operation that is listed in, in these commands and then uh, you see a delete button so this basically deletes your file i'm going to show you how to do all these operations and number four you see options like go to open in terminal new file new directory upload 
and number five you see show dot files and show owner mode so those are basically check boxes you can enable it if you want to see any dot files or what's the mode of that file so let me go to my files so i'm gonna go inside my home directory okay so now let's say i want to work work on some files under on demand directory so i'm just going to double click it and i clicked dev again so now let me double click this again all right so this is how you uh, go inside the uh, file in a directory and for example if you want to view this file just simply select this file and just press this view button so that basically uh show i mean shows you the file okay so that's how you view the file for every operation you need to make sure that it is selected and you press this button and for example if you want to edit this file just press this edit option and you will see a file editor open in a new tab okay and you see different options here and if you want to have it to vim or emacs you can change that i'm gonna leave this to default and you can set the font size and you can even change the mode and this is a yaml script so i'm just going to leave it like that and you can change the theme and there is a word wrap feature checkbox as well so for example let's say i'm just making some changes having a space so once you have made all the changes you need to click save to save your progress so if i hit save and it saves now we can close it so that's how you do the edit operation okay and the next one is rename so make sure that the file is selected and uh, you know just uh, rename it to form hyphen 2.yaml that basically renames rename it renames the file and also you can move this file to some other location let's say i just i want this form 2.yaml file inside the template directory so in that case what i can do is i can type the path template form 2.yaml let me do this one and now you see the file has been disappeared and if i go inside the directory i see the form 2.yaml so basically you can rename and you can move it as well and if you want to download just you know hit this download and then if if you want to copy and paste this file so just make sure that it's selected and press copy and go to the location where you want to paste it so i'm just i just want to be pasted it here so press paste okay so that's how you do copy paste and and for select all and select all just hit this button now everything is selected also you can use the control a shortcut so that also works so that's the use of this uh, button and then if you want to delete some file make sure that it's selected and you know hit the delete button okay and uh, this is how you uh, delete the file okay and the next option is uh, we're going to explore is go to for example right now we are in uh, home directory let's say i want to go to a scratch directory so you can make use of this option simply uh, type the path of the directory that you want to go to and if you hit okay so it's going to go into that directory you can see it has changed here scratch crochet okay and that's how you go inside uh, that's how you switch directories and let me let me come back to shell again okay so that's the use of this go to option for example if you want to uh, open this uh, directory in a terminal just simply press this one so you will see uh, the command line shell access in a new tab so now if you do an ls and it shows the files okay so that that command basically helps you to open the directory in a terminal so i'm just going to close this one and new file and new directory just need to give a name that's it this will be uh, creating a new file and the next one is upload you can uh, you know upload files from your local pc to uh, on demand but 
the one thing you need to uh, remember here is you can upload files of size only up to 10 gigabytes 10 gb okay if you want to uh, transfer files to on demand which has size of more than 10 gb then you have to do ssh or sftp login and then you have to transfer files so this on demand basically allows for uploading of files of size up to 10 gb okay that's that's one thing you need to remember here and this checkboxes it shows the dot files you could see the dot file dot git and this checkbox shows you one or more so those are the file operations you can do using on demand i mean uh, this is uh, this is uh, pretty easy uh, you know if rather than the command line shell command line shell thing because for moving and renaming files if you are strong in uh, a command line then you can but if you know if you don't have like enough knowledge uh, about command line then you can use this portal to you know play around with the files okay and okay so let me close this one let me switch back to the slides again okay so these are the use cases that we saw and the next slide uh, it talks about the job management so using on demand you can uh, monitor the status of your jobs running in the cluster and also you can uh, compose a new job and you have a set of uh, predefined templates available and you can use those templates and customize to your needs and then submit your uh, job to the slum and then get your results okay so for that you just need to go to jobs drop down and then you you see two options active jobs and job composer so this active jobs if you click on the active jobs it it shows the uh, live jobs which are running in the cluster okay and the another option job composer it helps you to compose a new job or submit a slum job okay and when you click on the active job you will see this output okay and let me show you okay so I just click the active jobs. It opens, uh, it opens in a new tab, and these are the jobs which are, you know, uh, which are currently running in the cluster. And let's say I just want to uh, find information about this job. Geo, you just need to type thing in the filter. So I just typed geoprog. So it it shows the uh, job information which are specific to geoprog. Okay, and if you if you type running, it's gonna uh, show the jobs which are currently running in the cluster. Okay, you can use uh, any keyword, any any filtering keyword here, and and also uh, another thing you need to note down here is if you want like more information about the job, just click this expand icon, and it gives more information about your job, like what cluster it's running i mean what's your job id and job name what's your resources how many nodes are you using okay uh, so this is uh, this is a very useful uh, feature here or else you have to do the sat command in command line to get all your job information so through on demand you can just simply use this expand icon to find more information about your job okay and if you just want your job which is which are running in, i mean just want to see your job which is running in the cluster just select your jobs and i don't see any data which means that i don't have any jobs running in the cluster okay and let me switch back to the slides okay and the next thing uh it's we're going to look is how to compose a job uh using on demand okay so I'll uh, come to the slide. Uh, I'll give a demo and then I'll come to the slide. So, so just go to job drop down and then click job composer. Okay. Let me close this one. And I don't have any jobs now. So I'm just gonna click a uh, click or select a new job. And I see three options from default template, from specified path, and from selected job. OK, 
okay so i can use any one of these three options to compose a new job okay let's say i'm just gonna use the default template so i'm just gonna select this default template okay so this is the default template which is which is there in on demand so it got created here and let's say i want to you know modify the job name or my script name and stuff so for that what you can do is go to this job options so now you can say test job and if you want to uh, modify a job script you can and uh, let's leave the cluster to discovery and just i'm going to save it so now you see my name of the job has been changed okay and on the right hand side you will see more information about the job like what is the job name and sorry what is this job name and what cluster i'm going to submit this to and i didn't specify any account and what is my script location and what's my script name okay let's say i just want to modify this uh, submit script okay for that you can use these commands open editor or open in terminal or open directory as well so i'm just going to use this open editor command and i'm just going to have some basic uh, sleep commands and echo commands let's say first job just going to have sleep of 5 okay so basically i'm just having a sleep command so delays the execution it's a simple simple script so i'm just going to save this one and i'm going to close it and you see the submission script has been updated here and now i'm going to submit this simple job that we created from default template so i'm going to submit Okay, you see the status has been changed to running. So once it changes to completed, uh, you can view the output. So let me refresh the screen. Yep, it's completed. Basically, it shows up. Sometimes you know it doesn't change, so I just do a simple refresh. So that should do the trick. And now I'm gonna. Uh, view of this output so basically in your folder contents you see a new file has been generated which is slum hyphen followed by a job uh, id and then dot out so just click this one and you see our output so our 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 job has been submitted to the cluster and it and it ran successfully so that's how you uh, create a job using default template and modify modify the job options and the slump script and then you submit it to the cluster and get the results okay so let me go back to the slides so that's the information i have so first to create any new job or compose a job you need to na navigate to jobs tab and then select jobs composer then you see this three options default template specified path from selected job okay and in the next slide yeah i basically uh uh put this information like how to create a new job from default template you basically select new job and then from default template then you modify the job name and job script file using this job options button so once you press the job options button you will see this window uh so here you can update your changes and once you are done you can save this one and also you can modify the contents of the job script file so job script file is this one so that's the thing i have here and you you can also use options open editor and open in terminal so it basically talks about these two options open editor and open in terminal 
and then submit the job. So once the status changes from running to completed, the job is finished. Okay. So any doubt so far? Oh, sorry, I missed a question in the chat. So Nicole has a question. Could you also switch directories on the left? Okay. Let me go back. Okay, so if you if you change the directory to scratch, it changes here, but it doesn't change here. So is this your question? Okay. Uh, so it so when you switch, it basically doesn't change here. So. Uh, was asking if okay so so i could also navigate through my the home directory and all associate subfolder just by simply clicking on those mm -hmm. left icons. Yeah. Right? yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you can uh, switch between all those subdirectories which are present in home directory. But if you want to go to Scratch or something else, uh, you you need to go here and do this one. But still, it it doesn't uh, uh, show up here. Yeah, so only home directory shows up here. Even if you select, uh, for example, projects directory, you see only home directory getting popped up here. So, okay. All right. So, any other questions? When you went into the edit function. Mm -hmm. To change a file, um, okay. you show that there's like um, uh, what was it called? Key bindings or something like that. What is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, let me open this file. Okay, so. So this is the default binding. Some people, they prefer Vim. So Vim is basically uh, it's like a kind of uh, a lot of Linux users, they use it. So if you change it to Vim, it uses the Vim bindings. You see the cursor has been changed. Okay. Okay, so it basically uses, oh, sorry, it's Emacs. Uh, let me switch to Vim. It basically uses that thing. This is Vim, okay. All right, cool, thanks. Okay, yeah. So let me close this one. Okay, so I'm going to move forward the slides. And so the next slide, okay, so the next one. Yeah, so this is basically, you know, how we uh, modified the, sum, uh, the summit script and how we submitted the job using the summit button and how to infer that our job has been completed. So when the status changes from running to completed, uh, we, we came to know that you know the job is run on the cluster and now it's ready to view our output and just to view the output you know you just you just identify from the folder contents that a new file has been generated which is dot out and then you simply click this file which opens up a new tab and in you, you will see the output 
in the new tab okay so so the next thing you're going to talk about is how to compose a job from the custom template for example you have your own template and you want to compose a job from that so that's mo most of the users they have their own custom template and they want to use it for their uh, slum jobs okay so that's completely possible so i will give you a demo and then i'll explain the slide information so okay so in job composer you see two options one is jobs and the other one is template okay so now we are going to create a custom template so i'm just going to press this button and now you see uh, a new page and here you can create your own template so i'm just going to uh, say create a new template and here you need to specify the path to your new template okay so mine is going to be home crochet custom template so i will show you what what's there in this path so let me go to the files directory okay let me go to the custom template and these are the two files i have i have an uh, input file and i have a uh, uh, summit script okay so let's see what's there in this file so input just you know just uh, uh, five lines just it it's about the various operating system and let's see what's there in this uh, script file okay there is a there's a uh, command you see while ifs is equal to read hyphen or line so what this script is going to do is it's going to read the input.txt line by line and that's that's what this while loop is going while loop is going to do and if it finds any line with this pattern apt then it's going to print that line okay so that's the script is going to do so i will go to the input.txt file so it's going to you know first uh consider this line ubuntu apt and it looks for a match whether it has any apt so it has it has apt thing so it's going to print that line and the same for debian apt as well and it's going to ignore the rest of these three lines okay so that's the script is going to do so let me go to the job composer so i gave the path to the custom template which has that script and the input file and i can give the name as custom template and i'm just going to hit save okay all right so you see in the folder contents a new file has been generated which is manifest.yaml so it basically consists of what's the script name and what's the cluster name okay you see a new file will be uh, generated and now you can create a new job from this custom template okay so for that you just need to select this create new job button okay so now you see a new job has been added to a jobs page and on the right you have you know our job details and one thing i missed to say here is you see the script location as home my username and on demand data and sys my job so basically whenever you submit a job through on demand it basically uh, you know creates a script location here okay projects default basically creates creates a script location in this in this path okay so the reason why it, it's listed two here is it's our second job the first one is test job so it, it gets created as one and this one gets created as two okay so the script name is script.sh and the folder contents we have input.txt script.sh and we have the summit script ready and now let's submit this job okay let's wait for some time it should excuse me it should get completed
also you can uh, stop your job using this button refresh this okay it's completed yeah so now you see islam output has been generated here and let me click this file and you see our output has been generated uh, successfully okay so that's how you you create your own template and do i mean put your uh, submission script and then you can create a new job from that custom template okay and let me switch back to slides okay so basically this slide information the next two three slides is going to uh, uh, talk about how we did how all the job creation using the custom template okay so in the jobs page you just select templates from the navigation menu and then you select new template so once you click select new template you see this form on the right hand side you specify the uh, path and then you give the name and then you give the cluster and if you have like any notes you can have that and click save so once you save you see a new file called manifest.yaml which will also be created here and the next slide you know just a screenshot of my input.txt and what's my uh, summit script what's and how my manifest.yaml file will look, look like it basically has my name and the host and the notes and my script file name okay so this file will be created uh, automatically and okay it's just a continuation so once you create your uh, custom template uh, you can then select new job uh, from template in the jobs page and then you select create new job and then once you uh, select create new job it will be created and you can submit the job and then once the status changes to completed you can view the output file okay so the next thing we are going to look is how to compose a new job from the specified path okay so let me give you a demo for that okay so for example now now this is the case you have a you have a uh, script and input.txt file in a specified path and you want to create a job from that so that's that's completely possible through on demand so just select new job and then select from specified path and here you can enter the path to the source which has your script file and the input file so i'm gonna have this one okay so i'm just going show you what i have in that path so i'm going to go into the home directory and so this is the path i gave home crochet sample python so i have uh, two files in it so one is the python script and the other one is my uh, submission script so i'm just gonna look into my python file so just a small program it uh, basically prints the greatest fibonacci number up to uh, for example if i giving an input as 90 okay so then it will print the greatest fibonacci number up to 90 is uh, let's say what's the number if it is like 81 it's going to print that if it's like 83 or something it's going to print that so that's the, that's what this program is going to do it's going to take in uh, one command line argument and it's going to give the greatest fibonacci number up to that command line argument okay and let's view our uh, submission script and this is our submission script so basically the first thing is shebang command so you, uh, you need to have that because it specify that we are in the solo terminal and then you have this resource request okay so the first one you have job name is uh, maxfib and my output name is this one and time for my job is uh, 10 minutes and i have set the end toss to be three okay so let's leave it like that and i'm gonna allocate one cpus for each task and then have set a memory per cpu of 100 megabytes okay so this is how you basically request the resources 
so there is a tool we have if you are not aware of it so if you go to a hpc.nmsc.edu website if you go to our tools and if you click this one that opens the uh, slum.nmsc.edu so it basically you know creates the slum script so let's say i want to have my job name as test and let me have this one test.out and this one i'm just gonna have it to let's leave it to normal partition and i'll say three cpus or one cps per task and let's see number of tasks is three and i'll set the email events yep and you see this slum script has been automatically generated here okay so you can you know just copy paste this thing uh, to your slum script in on demand okay so this is a useful tool and let me close this one okay yep so that's the thing i have and uh, so the next one is since this is a python script i have to load python module to my environment in order to run that script okay so if you don't specify this one uh, slum basically looks for this one and if it doesn't find it will not it will not be able to execute the python script okay and then you have this execution command so basically you have to use the srun command srun command basically uh, submits the job to slum so this is this is one vital command so you have to use srun if you want to submit the job to slum and python uh, it's you know how you uh, execute a python program you have this python uh, a word and then you have this uh, python file name and the command line argument okay so this is my uh, submission script okay and now let's get back to the job composer so i have this uh, path to the uh, directory which has my python file and my uh, submission script and uh, i'm gonna have this one as python job and my script name uh it's script.sh so that's the one that, which had all the resource request and uh, my module load command and cluster you have to choose you have to choose discovery that's the name of our cluster and uh, i'm gonna leave this account field blank and now i'm gonna hit save Okay, so now you see a new job has been added to our jobs page. And on the right hand side, you can uh, see our job details. And you know, our script location is now put in, it's put inside this, this path. Okay. And you see three, which means that this is our third job, and our script name and our folder contents and our summit script. Okay. So, one thing you need to note down here is whenever you are submitting a job uh, through on demand, you have to use a command called export all okay because if you if you if you submit this the same thing uh you know without on demand the slum you know it, it's going to give you uh the correct output but if you were trying to submit a job through on demand you have to have export all command in your srun uh statement okay i'm not sure why that's the what, what's the logic behind that but that's one of the workaround uh, in on demand if you want to submit a job so let me open this editor and make that change okay i'm gonna use this command export all okay i'm gonna have save okay, i'm gonna close this one so now you see it got refreshed and now i'm gonna submit this one Okay, so it's completed. So now you see a new uh, file has been generated here. So I'm gonna open this one and you see we got the output. So so output has been printed thrice because we set the end task to be three. So that's why you know we, we got three 
print statement in our output. Okay, so the greatest Fibonacci number up to 90 is 89. So we are able to compose the job and submit it to the slum and get the output successfully. So I'm going to close this one. So that's how you uh, create a new job using the option from specified path. And also you see another option from selected job. So this basically what does is it, it just creates a copy of your selected job. Let's, you see this job has been selected. If you, you know, press this option, just creates like a copy of that uh, selected job. Okay. Okay. So let me get to the slides. Okay. So that's the information I have how to uh, compose a job from the specified path. Basically you select new job and then from specified path. And then once you do that, you, you have a form to fill it up. So you have to specify the source path and you can have your job name and the script name and the cluster. And once you hit save, your new job will be created. Okay. So you can submit that job and get that output. The one we saw a few months back. The last statement, it's, you know, how to create a copy of the selected job. Okay. You can, uh, you can select new job and use this option from selected job. So this will create a copy of the selected job. So this one, it talks about the one I did a few months back. So this one, you see a new job has been created. Okay. Okay. So let me, Close this one. Okay. So, any doubts in the job composition? Okay. Okay. So Let me move to the next slide. So the next slide uh, will talk about how to uh, get the shell access through on-demand. So you see a new uh, tab here, which is clusters. And if you uh, select that, you get an option called discovery cell action access. So basically what it does is it, uh, it um, creates a cell shell access uh, to your login node of the discovery. Okay. So this is the output you will get once you uh, select discovery shell access. So I will show you to do that. So just select the clusters and you select the discovery shell access option. And you get the command line shell access. Now uh, you can do the operations that you want here. Okay. And it's connected to the login node two of our discovery. And close this one. Okay. And let's go to the next slide. The next slide, uh, it's interactive desktop. So, so the next coming slides, I'm gonna uh, help you how to launch an interactive desktop or interact interactive uh, GUIs we have. Some of the interactive graphical user interface we have our MATLAB, Jupyter Notebook, Shell, and VS Code Editor. So basically, it launches an interactive job on the compute nodes, and that's actually a similar to an interactive batch job. And on the right hand side, you see these form fields. So you have to set these fields if you want to launch the uh, interactive job on the compute nodes. Okay. So I'm going to help you how to uh, set these form fields. And the first, the first field you have is partition. So you have to select the partition uh, uh, for your interactive uh, job. And by default, interactive is selected. And uh, you have to choose your partition uh, that is available for you. You cannot uh, uh, use a partition which you are not authorized to do. And then you see a GPU's dropdown and uh, so GPUs are available in all the partitions except 
a normal. So if you select normal partition here, you will not be able to select the GPUs. And then you can specify the number of hours. So the max limit is eight hours for interactive desktop. And for the number of CPUs, uh, the max limit, if I'm not wrong, it's, it's eight or 16, if I'm not wrong. And the memory is uh, max limit is uh, 8096. And then you can have your email. And if you want to get notified when the job begins or ends, and then once you fill all these form fields, you can hit the launch button. Then you can able to launch the interactive desktop. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that. So you just select this interactive apps and just select this interactive desktop. Okay. And uh, by default interactive partition has been selected and let's say you just want to use the normal partition so if you use normal partition there are no gpus available so you not see this uh, option so i'm just going to have it to interactive and set the gpus to one and the number of hours the max limit is eight uh, let's do it to one hour and the number of cpus the max limit is eight as well leave it to two the memory and the max limit for the memory is 8192 okay and uh, i'm going to leave this field blank because i don't want the email notification so if you uh, enter this email or id uh, so you will get the notification when the job begins and also when the job ends so you will get two notifications and let me leave that blank i'm going to launch okay so now you get get a new uh page and you will see this launch desktop option only when the resources that you have requested becomes available so so you can set the compression and the image quality for your uh, desktop so i'm gonna set the image quality to be high and compression to be in a mid range and uh, I'm going to launch the desktop. All right. So now you have launched the interactive desktop on the compute nodes of the discovery. Okay. And you can see the list of applications available here. And you can, you can also, you know, use different workspaces. You, you see four workspaces here. You can also make use of that. And at the bottom you have, um, different options you have terminal okay so we are in this node i think we have request for gpu so that's the reason and you have various options here you can explore okay so that's that's how you launch an interactive desktop on the compute nodes so Let's say you just, you know, disconnected from this uh, interactive desktop and uh, you want to uh, connect it back again. So you just go to this page and hit the launch desktop option button again. So that will help you get connected. And once you're done with all the work, make sure that you uh, log out of it and free the resources, okay, and kill the session. So to do that, you can just go to uh, your account and then just press log out. And just to log out. Okay, so that gets disconnected. You can also make use of this delete button here. Okay, you can uh, do either base, but make sure that once you're done with your work, uh, delete the session and free the resources. And uh, you see this this card will be retained for six more days uh, if you want to delete it uh, uh, you can use this delete button as well so this deletes the session and deletes this card as well and you see the session id so this basically has all the logs information so if you click that 
you will see your logs and then you will see your job script options that you had the one you requested and other stuff so so if you want to have this for your future reference you can uh, leave this as it is and that's how we launch an interactive desktop and let me go to the slides yeah so uh, i'm just you know i just had this image to show that how to launch this desktop so you can just press this button and once you press it it opens a desktop in the new tab and the next one i have is interactive matlab so you can also have interactive matlab on the compute node of the discovery and you have to fill the form fields and additionally you have uh, two three more fields to select the matlab version and you can uh, enter the other modules if you want to have along with your matlab and you can also use this disable multi threading checkbox okay and let's see how to fill these form fields for interactive matlab okay i'm just going to select this one and let me try let me try submitting a job to iap lab i don't have the uh, authorization to do that but let me try okay so yeah whenever you try to uh, submit a job that you're not allowed to you'll get this error batch submission fail so make sure that you choose your correct partition so i'm just going to leave it to interactive and matlab uh, Right now we have only two versions, 2020A and 2018A. So I'm gonna select 2020A, and uh, I don't I don't want any other modules along with the MATLAB. So I'm just gonna leave this blank. And if you wanna disable multi-threading for MATLAB, you can use this checkbox. So multi-threading has been enabled across the cluster by default. So if you want to, uh, oh sorry, if you want to disable it, you can use this checkbox. Okay. So now I'm gonna select launch. Okay, so it's it's waiting for the resources to get allocated. So once it's allocated, you will see this launch MATLAB button. So I'm gonna press this one. Okay. So you see an interactive MATLAB which is running on the compute nodes. And now I'm just gonna run this, you know, sample MATLAB script. It's basically just an addition operation. So I'm just gonna run and see. Okay, it's gonna change. Yep, I got the output. Okay, so that's how you launch an interactive uh, MATLAB on the compute nodes. And we have like four workspaces here that you can use for other applications. And and just what just close it once you're done. And the session is still active, so oh, it get it got disconnected. Okay. Okay. So just you know, if you close the MATLAB, it it kills the session. Okay. So you can retain this card, and if you want to delete it, just make use of this button. So that that gets deleted. Okay. So that's how you launch an interactive MATLAB on the compute nodes, and. The next one we have is interactive Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so for launching the Jupyter Notebook, like a lot of people, they have like machine learning projects running on the Jupyter Notebook and they use this notebook for various reasons. So you can, you know, launch this interactive Jupyter Notebook on the compute nodes using on-demand. So for that, you have to fill the same uh, form, but, you know, with different uh, uh, form details at the end. So you have this Anaconda version that you need to select. So this Jupyter Notebook, it gets launched using the Anaconda uh, environment. So Anaconda environment is basically, uh, it's where you put your packages and you create your own environment and you use that for your uh, project, okay? So this Jupyter Notebook, it basically runs using this Anaconda environment. And you can also use your own custom Conda environment 
to launch this Jupyter notebook. But remember that. So whenever you are using your own custom environment, you have to have Jupyter Lab installed, or else the Jupyter notebook will not be launched successfully. So I will show you how to do that, and you can use this text box to enter your uh, to activate your custom environment. Okay. Okay. So I'll show you. Okay. So you will not see this interactive app sandbox because this is for the uh, HPC team. The, uh, the, this is for the HPC development team. And let me go to the Jupyter notebook. Okay. Okay. So let me open my shell as well. Okay. So I'm gonna show you how to, how Anaconda environment works. Okay, so I have you know if you if you do modular Anaconda, it's gonna point to the Anaconda three version. I'm gonna list the envir environment that's there currently. Okay, by default it points to the base environment. Okay, so I'm just gonna list see the packages that that's there in the base environment. So I'm just using this activate command. So condor list, it lists all the packages in the uh, base environment. Okay. All right. So these are the packages I have. Remember uh, to launch Jupyter notebook using Anaconda, you have to have the Jupyter lab installed. So you see in the base environment, it's installed already. Okay. So if you are just uh, using the if you are just using the base environment and if you don't want to use this custom environment, you can you don't need to use this checkbox and you can leave it like that. So if you want to just use the base environment, uh, your Jupyter lab will be uh, launched successfully. And if you launch it. Okay. Let's wait for some time. You should see the launch Jupyter notebook button. Okay, so you see the connect to Jupyter button here and just press this one. So you see uh, Jupyter notebook has been launched and it's, it's been launched successfully. And let's say I just, you know, logged out and I want to log in again. So you can make use of the password that is uh, that is that is shown here. Just copy, and then you just paste it. Okay, so that's how you log out and log in again. And you know you can work on the notebooks you have. And. This is how you launch the Jupyter Notebook using the Anaconda base environment. And once you're done, make sure to hit this quit button uh, because this stops the Jupyter server and you will be freeing the resources. Okay. And you see the session gets uh, completed. Okay. And we just use the Anaconda base environment to launch the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so now let's see how to use your custom environment and launch the Jupyter notebook. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the shell again. Okay, so I'm just gonna come out of this environment base. Okay, so Conda deactivates it, it deactivates the environment and I'm gonna create a new environment. Okay. So you need to use the hyphen in flag and then let's say test. I'm gonna have Python 3.6. Okay, so this is the command to create a new environment. Okay. Should take some time to install the packages.
So let me just hit an S. So now we have installed the packages and I'm just going to activate the test environment and see whether I have the packages installed. Yeah, you see the packages, it's been installed successfully and conda list, you know, this command, it, it helps you to uh, list the packages that is in your environment. Okay, so now let's try to, you know, launch this Jupyter notebook using this environment. Remember, we don't have a Jupyter lab, so probably it should not launch. Let's let's try to do that. Okay. So you have to use this checkbox and then you enter the conda activate command and you hit launch. So let's open the session ID as well. So the thing is, it, it will not uh, launch the Jupyter notebook. Go to the logs. Okay. So you see here, you see this command. This is pointing to our test environment and it, it looks for the Jupyter notebook. Uh, Jupyter notebook config file. So since we don't have that, so it will not be, uh, you know, able to find that file. It says no such file or directory and it will not be able to launch the notebook successfully. So it, you know, it, it keeps, you know, looking for that file and after the, it gets timed out, you know, the session gets scaled. So you see it get, it got completed and it's not able to, you know, launch the Jupyter notebook. Okay, so now let's let's install the Jupyter notebook. So let me go to the environment and uh, the command is Anaconda. Okay, so this, this one should be. Okay, let me. Okay, yeah, you can use this command to uh, install the Jupyter lab. And this command. So now we are trying to install this package Jupyter lab. So this will help us to launch the notebook. Okay, I'm just gonna proceed. Okay, so now let me try to list the packages that I have in the test environment. And you see uh, Jupyter lab has been installed. And these are the other dependencies that we have. And now let's go back and try to launch the Jupyter notebook again. So this time it should, it should work. Let's test it out. Okay. Um, so now, I'm just going to activate my test environment, which is the Jupyter lab package. Going to launch it. Now you, you are able to launch it successfully. So now if you connect, if you want to run any script, do that and just gonna do that all. Just, so these are the packages, uh, you know, 
it's there in the environment you see the jupiter lab and python and other packages and then you have your uh, program running as well so that's how you uh, launch the jupyter notebook using your custom environment okay so i'm going to leave this one okay quit okay and let's go back to the slides okay so the next thing we have is interactive shell uh, uh, so this is the new update we had like two weeks back and you can also you know launch an interactive terminal session using tmx on the uh, compute nodes uh, same as that you have to fill the form fields and you have additional field like font size and also you have a checkbox so if you use this you know if you select this checkbox then you're going to use a, a, a config file okay if you if you don't want to use this then you can uh, and select the checkbox and that will point to default uh, config okay so that's the use of this uh, checkbox and here the number of hours the max limit is 24 and the number of cpus or threads the max limit is 16 okay in whereas in the previous three uh, three interactive desk interactive desktop and the jupyter notebook and the matlab we look the max limit is eight okay so here it's been increased and let's let's launch this one as well okay and i use this config file should I launch it? Okay. Just gonna hit connect. Do you see an interactive terminal session on the compute now? Okay. That's how you launch it. And I leave. I delete this one. And the next one, it's just the output of the interactive shell. And the next one we have is interactive VS code. We can also launch this VS code editor on the compute nodes. And uh, you just need to uh, add a few, I mean, add a few more, you, you need to give value for a few more form fields. And you can select this project directory here. And also you can make use of this text box if you want to load other modules. And also the number of us max limit is 24. And number of CPUs max limit is 16. Okay. And let's try to launch this interactive VS code as well. So let's select the project directory. Just gonna have ODBC share. Okay, have selected the project directory. And this is an useful feature because you can have an editor launch on the compute nodes and you can do a programming task. Okay, I'm just gonna connect the VS code. There you go. So you have a VS code launched on the VS code editor, which gets launched on the compute nodes. So I have not explored this one, but you see, you see here, you know, discovery C34, and you have this terminal. So that's how you, you launch an int interactive VS code editor on the compute nodes. And let me switch back to slides. Almost we have reached the end of the workshop and it's just an output how it looks like. And uh, the last slide is, is the interactive session step. So it basically, it shows the list of interactive session running on the compute nodes. And also it's crucial to delete the session if you have not and free the resources. And also session info like output logs, job script options can be found by clicking this link. Okay. So it's about this tab, interactive sessions. Okay. So let me delete this one since I'm done. Okay. And this will be written for six more days and 
if you don't want that you can just delete this one okay that's it uh so any questions okay there's a question in the chat box when would i take advantage of this test of function okay applications okay okay so so you can make use of this you know uh, it gives like a uh, interactive desktop and if you want to uh, do some interactive uh, uh, jobs directly with the compute nodes uh, you can make use of this uh, terminal so if if uh, if you are uh, trying to you know communicate with or do an interactive job through the login node of the discovery uh, you you have to run multiple uh, slump commands to get connected to the compute node of the discovery so so this desktop it, it directly you know launches it on the compute node and you can make use of it i'm not sure does that answer your question okay so thanks everyone for taking your time to attend this workshop and we have reached the end let me stop the recording